hello everybody the next one which we are going to discuss is about s bit sfr and sf16 which may be a remote chance we will be using in our program but s bit is a quite often used you know uh, declaration method you can see bit is used for the bit addressable location whereas we also discussed in our 8051 there is a sfr that means special function registers you can see this port 0 port 1 port 2 port 3 okay so these all is called as a port if you want to make or you want to send some data to the port yes we can just use a command like port 1 equals the value okay whereas you want to only turn on a specific bit in a port maybe bit 0 you want to turn on or bit 1 you want to turn on something like that then you have to access through a keyword called sfr you can see here the special function registers which is available in 8051 okay and we will be using it for a 1 bit of course even 8 bit you want to access you can use it as a sfr or you want to use 16 bit there are one 16 bit register is there you want to use that then it has to be used as a sf16 there is no direct method to access the each bit so we have to do in the indirect method you just see here how it has done uh, let us assume this is our starting point of our c program void main with a parenthesis and while one okay that means is a infinite loop the condition is always true is a infinite loop we say p10 equals not of p10 but what is the p10 here it is not available in our normal c program you can see that has been defined in our embedded c program like this s bit P one zero is nothing but zero x nine zero, zero x nine zero. It refers to the port also. Whereas when you go on into the S bit mode, bit zero is called as a nine zero, bit one, bit two, bit three, four, five, six, seven. This is nine seven. So whatever address is shown here is also address for the bit addressable locations. Okay. it's not all registers are bit addressable there are some registers which is not bit addressable okay so bit and s bit is a very very important in terms of embedded programming earlier we have seen how to declare a variable like uh, we just declare a data type and followed by the you know um the variable name you can see here char and the like let's say like number 1 okay or char the time or something like that whereas if you want to um, say to the compiler reserve this variable in a ram or maybe reserve this in a uh, flash memory please look at There's a huge difference. If you have some constant table, maybe you want to display some message on LCD, or maybe you want to display your project title, uh, something like that, which is almost you know fixed constant. You know it's not going to change. Uh, there is no point of declaring those uh, variables into a RAM. It's a waste of memory. As I mentioned earlier, we have very limited memory with our it 51 controllers so we have to use these memories effectively so you must specify whether a particular variable goes to a, a ram or a flash there's two types of memory we already discussed about that is a flash or ram or i can say in other words just declare the variable name it just directly goes to ram if you want to declare such a way that you want to put the data into flash then you have to use a keyword called code okay so character code and c time so this string will be stored in our internal flash memory okay so there are other types of 
memory extensions you can see here so based on the user requirement you have to choose any one of them well as you are aware um, the c language or even any structured programming language uh, which has uh, basic things like a sequence that means you have to write the programs one after another then there will be a selection there should be option for selecting something and then iteration so basically a structured programming language does th these jobs sequence selection and iteration now whatever commands we discussed you you may need to write th those things one after another okay that means this is a sequence whereas when it comes to the you know uh, selection the basic selection statement is nothing but a if statement which falls under category of control structure that means uh, um, these statements makes or uh, you know uh, changes the flow of execution okay so it's a very important you need to go through a um, you know a kind of uh, if else okay like a diversion and you know very well the diversion is uh, uh, is essential or crucial for performing a specific task and rejecting some task okay um the simpler version you can see here if you have to put a condition if condition is true you may have a statement please look at here if there is only one statement we no need to have a brackets here below if statement you want to have a multiple lines then you should provide a, a curly parenthesis here okay and we have a if else statement if a condition if condition is true the statement return over here will be executed else the statement too will be executed and you can see if you have a multiple uh, choice you can also go for a switch case statement and again you might have learned in our uh, basic c programming classes switch based on a condition and a case one case two and so on up to the default case after performing case 1 we should provide a break in the flow of program and then it goes to the end of the switch case statement okay I'll just to have a look at one example on this topic now just assume these ports are connected with is leds okay there are four leds connected with a port and just you want to read a particular variable value based on the value you want to turn on one led or you want to turn on two led or three or four leds it looks like a bar graph okay so how it can be done so assume this has one function in a c language switch based on the value which you want to branch and then within a bracket we write a case 1 if the current level value is it going to be 1 it will reach over here and you can see 0 1 so in hexadecimal 0 1 if you look at in binary four zeros followed by 3 0 1 okay and break statement from here the program will jump to this location and same way if the current level is going to be 2 we should not write it here as a 2 if the level is 2 means we want to show two leds are on okay so two leds means 0011 it is 3 and 00 is going to be 0 likewise there is like three leds 7 and we say if nothing comes under this category we say as a default of course it's just written to show you a simple example but we have to address properly okay like all of uh, eight statements we have to eight bits we have to address properly the next essential statement as i mentioned earlier is iteration we have a, a you know different uh, looping statements like while do while and for statement and while while statement the condition will be tested if it's true the statement will be performed and of course mostly while will come always with a bracket as we have to alter the test condition over here and also we need to initialize the 
you know the condition or we have to start earlier uh, to the while loop we have to initialize the condition and then testing the condition and you have to alter the condition statement regarding for loop is uh, another version of a looping statement uh, sorry for this you can ignore this and for with the initial value and a test condition and you want to update the condition okay and then you can write the statements what you want again just below for you want to write only one statement you no need to have this bracket if you want to write multiple statements then this bracket is mandatory just have a look at this assume that in our microcontroller port 1 we have 8 leds connected okay and you want to switch on the first led and then after a period of time you want to switch over to second led you want to turn on second led then third led and you want to move like that okay so how it can be done if you make like making first led is on that means 0000 and 0001 that means it is 0x01 so we start a for looping having x as a 01 and when you keep shifting this value towards left side left side at the re at the end like from here if the one shift go it goes outside that means it's a zero so until it's not equal to zero we ask we shift them by left side by one position okay so what will be the starting condition that means the program starts with the for loop and x is 1 so 1 will be assigned to port 1 and there is a delay that means you can say the led is getting just getting on okay then what we do we shift it by one position so one what happens from here it moves to this location and zero is getting shifted here so that means it is 2 0 now 2 0 will be sent to port 1 and then 4 0 8 0 like this it goes on into the uh, looping okay this is a help of a for loop okay so hope you understand this example the next thing which i am going to talk about like a function um, we may develop you know the program into a smaller level for the first few examples but uh, later we will be uh, developing uh, you know little bit bigger examples where we need to write our programs into easily understandable format okay uh, it is also uh, uh, you know helpful to repeat or we can say the repeated codes can be kept away from the our main program so that we can call the same statements whenever it's required okay so the function is going to serve a multiple purpose and also if you write the program using functions the clarity of the program is going to be uh, good okay so when you do a function you have to carry out the following things that means first you have to make a prototype of function that means something like this okay function prototype and then you have to define the function that means what that function supposed to do and in your main program you have to call the function not only in main even you can call it in a function in function but you have to call the function and you can see this is the function prototype the function is going to return an integer and the name of the function is sum and it's going to take two integer inputs and you can see over here there is a function definition okay and we return the value sum and same way there is one more example of delay this is our main program delay of 100 we are just passing the value 100 here and you can see we are working with the value here x okay so it is just example for function and this is how you can have a function call this is called as a function call so there is a function prototype function definition and also there is a function call statements we'll discuss the concept of array in our next video thanks for watching